All right, hey guys, uh, Sam here. Let's see, middle of the day, October, uh, yeah, October 11th. And uh, just a quick update on a few things. We have the possibility for some further clarification as to where we are with Bitcoin and, and the potential for an entry. Too soon to call it. But um, I thought we'd just take a quick uh, look here and review it. I, now, I've stripped all the fibs off here just to you know, clarify. Sometimes it's a good idea to um, you know, strip your chart back a little bit and get, get a fresh look at it and reevaluate you know, some of your targets and see if they still make sense. So looking here, the one thing that we can see is that we're hovering here around the median line, which is not unusual. Uh, now... You know, as to where we go next from here, you know, so, you know, what I continue to propose to you is that this is a high risk time to be a buyer. Um, you know, no, nothing says it couldn't just rip straight up here to the outside edge of the, of the pitchfork here. Certainly it could do that. Um, but I would propose to you that, that the better play, if you're, if you're not currently long, is to be patiently waiting for a retracement. So if we just pull up to the, the most recent high... And we, um, you know, ha have been looking at this as potentially some sort of a fourth wave here. And we'll, we'll go down and look at it on the hourly in a sec. But, you know, a reasonable spot to be looking would be, you know, where's my box? Reasonable spot would be down here, 38 to the 50. That's 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 a common retracement point. It would it would fit with the market structure here uh, on on the edge of the median line here, which has contained the market so beautifully. But again, you know, n nothing says that we can't just continue to rip and we'll go up and touch 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 the uh, the outside edge of the pitchfork. So so how can we determine where we are and if that's even a realistic possibility? Because if you're not in and you know you see this kind of action, you're looking for the next opportunity to get in. Well, so. I, I propose to you that you got to go to a smaller time frame and see if you can break this correction down to get some, some sort of probability. Now, a lot of lines on this. I understand that. So let me, let me see if I can pull these off here. Yeah, let's, let's see if I can recreate what I've got. Here, I'll take the channel off so you can see it. And we'll take this off. Okay, so here here we are. We we uh, we are what we're looking for is some way to quantify this correction. So in the most simple, you know, El Elliott wave terms, we we'd be looking for a three wave correction, but we're looking for the kind of subdivision that gives us confidence that we're on the right track. So we we've had this push down. Now we seem to be carving out a very nice ABC into a B wave. Remember the idea here is that we we trend in fives, we correct in three. So this this nice little three wave correction into a potential B wave here, you know, sets up the possibility for what we're looking for, which is this last push down, so that we can re-enter the market here down or in this 4600 range. So is that is that a possibility? Well, you know, let me. I'm just gonna see if I can pull that off to the side. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so if we've got a B wave here underway, the very common target would be the 786. So if we look here, we've just come a few ticks shy of it. So the idea here is that this is a push for new highs. And if it fails, that's what gives the fuel for the market to come come back down. As people that were buyer, either that bought the retracement here, uh, take some profit, or their uh, trailing stops are hit, all of those things can give that the fuel that we're looking for to bring it back lower. And we can uh, get an opportunity to try and get into the market. So I'm going to take this even even to a smaller time frame so we can see some of the more uh, some of the the fib relationships that may be um, setting up for us so you know here's our little a b c and we'd be looking for and expecting a relationship between these swings so if this is the a low there's a b high so what we're looking for is the, the most common target which is 100 percent so wave c equaling 100% of wave A. And interestingly, you can see that those two line up rather nicely here. So the 786 and the and the 100% alternate price projection give us this nice little box right here. So potentially, so I, I'm not saying that's a sell. That's not what I'm saying. 
what I'm saying is that we may be, you know, in, in a position here where we're, we're getting better clarification as to what kind of structure is unfolding. Now, remember, as I will always tell you, it's only a potential roadmap. This could, it could be, could be that this this move down here completes the correction. It's shallow. It did do the, um, it got to the 23.6. But if you look at it, you can see it looks more, uh, like a five wave. So we've got a one, here's a two, three, you know, th this was a unusually large wick. So potentially there's a one, two, three, four, and some sort of a triangle to complete the fifth. So you've got the possibility this is the low of your A wave. Then we're putting in the ABC of our B wave. And what we're looking for is that one more, one more push down to give us the setup down here for our entry. You know, that, that's that's the hope right now. Again, nothing says this this couldn't just continue to rip. But if we look here, so can we get any help from our oscillators on timing? Well, we're getting a little hot, a little hot here. You know, so potentially it's it's all there. But we, it needs to, you know, you, you can't be speculating on that, you know, and looking to try and sell it here on a touch of the, the 786. I shouldn't say it. You can, but I wouldn't. I'm put it to you that way. What, I, what, what I'm waiting for, because we're in the midst of a, a clearly defined impulsive structure, we're looking for the next entry to the long side. So is that realistic? Is that a possibility? Well, you know, r right now, this looks like it's, it's doing exactly what you'd expect. Like, so if you opened up your, your Elliott wave or, or, you know, fib retracement and fib projection textbook, you know, and went to, you know, chapter one, this is exactly where you would expect to see this going. So the potential is there that we come up here. Maybe we've already wicked the high here before we get the the correction back down. You know, it, it's just a it's just a possibility, but it's starting to look better and better. So if we go to the to the back to our one hour and we uh, revisit this, so we we've got the possibility now that this is this is unfolding. So we we put that back in, and potentially there's our B wave. How do we know? We, you know, we, we just aren't going to know until we see what kind of reaction we get. Do we get a push through new highs? If that's the case, then you know, does that make sense? Well, let's, let's go back here. So we, as you can see it here, I'm pulling from the swing low here to the swing high. Well, we've gone to the 23.6. So valid, if this is our one, two, three, you know, this, and if we go even a little bit further and say, okay, well, there's our two low. Actually, we had it right there. Well, we've gotten just shy of the 38. So it could be, but the the structure within it, as we go to the smaller time frames, suggests that we have potential for one more push down. And since I propose to you that it's a, it's constantly a process of waiting for the trade that you like or that makes makes the most sense in terms of what we're seeing in terms of the structure high risk area to be a buyer you know as as we sit here slamming into the median line right and we can and we can just look back for for you know reference here last time last time here we are again so indecisive here so if we get this set up and we get the pull back down then it gives us a high degree of confidence that pattern price time structure geometry all you know, all lining up for us to be confident here that there's an entry looking for the push up to the to the new highs so it, bottom line it's a it's a wait, wait patiently one other thing i thought i would show you is that if we go down here to our oscillator you know, you can make the case that potentially, potentially, the wave five high is in. I mean, the structure is there. It all makes sense. We're, we're at the median line. That's a possibility. That's a possibility. But if we look, I'm going to take this back hip, up here. If we look down below to the oscillators, so I've got here the, the wave oscillator, and I'm going, to, I'm going to blow it up so you can see it. So here's the prior swing. Now, we've got more strength here. So prior high, here's the oscillator putting in new highs. This would imply that this is a third wave that's underway because of the strength of it. So if we go back here and look, so this does indeed fit the profile of this being a one, two. We've had the big push up for three. That's that's the that's the high in the oscillator implying that that's a third wave and we're waiting for the four if we can if we can get in if it gives it to us we can get the four and then take the run up back to the five now how do i have that little box there well again i'll just i'll do this just so you get clear on 
on the potential relationships between the swings. So I'm just swinging. I'm just pulling from that swing low to high from the, 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 the dominant pivot here to the low. Okay, so we can see here. So there's the, the, the 161.8 right here on this edge. So that's part of why I've drawn the box there. Okay, so we know that common targets for impulsive structures like this, if we're going to go, you know, dominant swing to the dominant swing, a likely target would be between the six one, the one six one eight and the one seven five. Okay. Now we can also see. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna take that off since we've seen that. I don't want the chart to clutter too much. So we would also pull from this swing low to this swing high. That was our our fourth wave, and you see there's the one hundred, the negative one hundred percent, right? So we. we 23, we got to it, 618, that's a that negative 618, that's a potential target. We've got the possible pull here, so we've got a little overlap, a little confluence right here. So that's likely to be a bit of resistance. And then we've got the negative 100% for the extreme push up here. And then we've got the negative 618 on the smaller pull if we get the setup. But that is, that is speculative. We don't know that we're going to get that. Then additionally... If we're, yeah, let's see, if I'm pulling, yeah, I got to get that off. 3 high to that low. Then you can see the 1272 up here, which is also a common projection target. 127.2 being the square root of 1618. And it often, it's a secondary uh, fib turning point. So I got this little box up here. That's our structure. It fits with the outside edge of the pitchfork. So a target, a target, all, you know, all just potential, potential roadmap. Do we see the pullback? Don't know. Don't know. We can just wait patiently. Again, if you're not in, hopefully, hopefully this plays because we've got all the technical uh, structure and the fib relationships are there. Now we're going to need to see a big pullback. So my suggestion to you is... You know, if you're a buyer here, I'd at least be tight with the stop. You know, if you think it's it's just about to break because it's it's reasonable because characteristics of, of market reactions around median lines. If you hover, the longer you hover, the more probability that you get a, a push to the one of the outer edges. What we're hoping for is the pullback so we can catch this because we've got nice upside targets here. So if we can catch it down here, 4,600, our targets are up here at you know 43, 54, 53 in change. So we've got a nice trade potentially setting up but if we rip through here it could just go it could just go straight so what you know you got to watch it got to be patient and as i propose to you you wait for your pitch you wait for the trade that that you feel most confident in that that has all of the uh, the, the technical foundation that you're looking for when you enter the market and then you can be tight on the risk control that's my view of it. So let's um, let's buzz over Ethereum. Really, not much change here. We're still stuck in this in this range, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Pretty much the same thing with Litecoin, just in a range, you know, on the edge of the median line. Nothing nothing really new to report. Now I did get a request today to take a look at Stellar Lumens. Now this is um, you know a, a very popular crypto, and I've got it up here against Bitcoin and against the dollar. So Looking at it, you know, I bring it up here. This is against Bitcoin on Kraken. I've got a four hour here. So, you know, like any any chart, first thing we do is is pull it up and say, well, you know, what, what can we glean from the longer term? So if I go out to, let's go to an eight hour and have a look. You know, there there are a lot of crypto traders that that look for this kind of setup where you've had this very long, long, long downtrend. That that the the assumption being that what you have here is accumulation, and you see this a lot in crypto where that accumulation triggers a a, a push. And then if I if I pull out further here, you know, look look at where it's been. So this this long sell off here is all of the the week longs just abandon it and there's an accumulation phase. So if we if we look at the on balance volume here, you know, potentially this it's it's somewhat dormant. It it just takes one 
one push here to get you know the the trend followers and and the people that want to jump on the action to start to support that movement. So as I look at that, you know it. it <laughs> It's hard to argue with the downtrend, right? So, and still, it's you know, there's a there's um, proof of an impulsive move up here. You're you're buying it either because you like the long term story fundamentally, or we're going to break it down to a, a much smaller time frame. I just I, it's always important to see where it's come from. So, one, you get potential of where it could go, but two, you get some perspective on how firmly established this downtrend is. Now, we can see the the one positive note here, we had the little break of the Vegas wave. So, you know, a good sign, but we're we're still, you know, clearly the trend is down. But let, let's let's look at it. Let's go down to a four hour. Is there a trade here? So, I'm going to just open it up. So, you know, here, here's the move beyond the, the, the moving averages. You know, do we have something here? Well, you'd have to pull. You'd have to pull. Nah, you'd have to pull from low to high. Can we learn anything? Well, you know, that's not a good sign that that deep of a break of the of the six five, you know, it's it's recovered and and potentially. So, you know, if you pull here from the most recent swing low, you know, here you're you're even through the seven, eight, six. So structurally, you know, you I suppose you could make a case that this is your your, your first wave up. This could be the one wave. And we can look at this and say, well, clearly there's a there's an ABC correction. We've We've got. We've got this A, A to a B right to the 50, and we come down. We go through the negative 23.6, so with some some long wicking action. So potentially you've got a, a one deep two. You know this this needs to start to look more impulsive for me to get excited about the the potential here. Right now this looks more corrective. And really, you, you know, until you see some impulsive behavior. You know, again, unless you're you're trading fundamentally and you're you're operating on the assumption that this very long accumulation period is starting to show signs of uh, of life and and strong hands have now accumulated and they'll take the ride up. Well, you know, I suppose you could make that case. Technically, I, you know, it's it's just not there yet, in my view, in my view, for what that's worth. And it's it's not it's not much different over against the dollar. You know, most people will trade this against Bitcoin. A little bit better here because if you look at it from swing low to high, we've gone to the 50 and the moving averages and the Vegas wave has held it. So there's the ABC. You know, again, it's, it's you know, to try and trade it with, with probability, you know, technically, you've got to see something impulsive here so that you can wait for that impulse to show itself. And then we wait for the retracement. So you know, for me, that it's not there yet, not there yet, but it's definitely one to watch, and it has a good fundamental story. It's good on the, on the, um, on the Coin Gecko scale. It, I think it's um, it's well over fifty. So it's a popular crypto. It's an interesting story, but for me, technically, one to watch, but really nothing there that I can enter in comfortably saying I I, I recognize. The, the structure, the pattern, the geometry, it's all there. You know, as far as I'm concerned here, you know, you, you could just be going off of the fibs, but I've got no structure that gives me confidence yet. All right, how am I doing on time? There's 18 minutes. All right, I'm going to do one more real quick. Just, I, I thought this was kind of interesting. You know, a lot of people always, you know, I get a lot of people asking me what to trade and how to find trades. So one of the things that, that a lot of people will do is we'll go over here to the the trading view. And I just thought out of curiosity I, I, that we'd look at who was the top performer for the last, I think it was year to date I was looking at this. Yeah, year to date. So who's the top performer for year to date against the dollar? And it's PIVX. Then I went over and said, well, who's the top performer against Bitcoin? And it's PIVX, year to date. Those are those are pretty interesting numbers. So, you know, certainly it warrants a look. So, you know, over here to CoinGecko, you know, we're at 59, as I will often tell you, look, in, look for coins or currency, cryptocurrencies that are over 50 on their metric scale. And I'll let you read about their ranking system if you, if you haven't already. So definitely a contender. So let's have a look at it. So I brought it up here. Uh, where have I got it? I've got it here. 
against Bitcoin and against and, and against the dollar. Let's see. So, yeah, here it is against the dollar. Let's look against the dollar. Uh, all right. So that's okay. Let's pull this off. So what what can we we learn from that? Well, one of the things I don't like to see is very long wicks, long long tail wicks. Because it just shows chop to me, and it's not the kind of trending structure that I think is favorable. But you certainly can look at this and say, well, the Vegas wave has held it nicely, so we've got, we've, you know, we know we've got an uptrend. So, you know, entry, well, you know, just basics. Well, let's 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 pull the last swing low to swing high, you know, as you would any chart. You know, again, the, a little spiky on the long wick. So the 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 Vegas wave holds it. You, so you you just you would keep checking, keep checking. Well, you know, if I go all the way back, you know, I I, I guess you can make a case here that you'd have, you can make a case that you've got you've got this kind of support being offered up here, previously resistance now, you know, degree of support despite the long wicks. I don't like to see that kind of long wicking structure. It just means, you know, a lot of a lot of spiky run, a lot of stop running, a lot of people getting wicked out. But if you're a bull, you know, I mean, right now you're a little late to the party. Perhaps you could have, you know, been a buyer here as we wick these 50s. You've got some good upside here. You know, not not good enough for me to take it, but definitely one to keep an eye on just because of those performance metrics. Let's go look at it against Bitcoin. Now, this is kind of interesting, right? So here's very common, th something I show you all, all all the time. So I'm just swing, going from swing low to swing high. Where do we go? Right in that little pocket between the 618 and the 65 to, to the tick. So you can see, just as I did before. So you can see this prior resistance here in the box. Look, look how nicely that plays. Prior resistance offering the support in the little box. What do we do? We go right into it. So I, I suppose you can make the case that this is some sort of impulsive and you've got an ABC correction. This is deep, but you know it's certainly it, it's certainly a contender. You're going to have to get through the, this this structure here. You've got your Vegas wave going to be a little bit of resistance, but you know, any help on the oscillators? Well, you know, you're just now starting to get across on the OBV, so maybe a little volume coming into it. That, that that's a trade there. You, you know, you could be a, you know you could be getting into that. Maybe you wait for a little pullback here, get 50% of that. You know, it's it's not the kind of structure that that I like, but you know, shit. I mean, this thing could could explode. It certainly has exploded previously, so you know, it's one to watch. It's certainly got great performance metrics. You know, the more you look at it, you gotta you gotta consider the dominant trend. So until yeah, let's go. We gotta get to a little higher time frame. You gotta respect the trend. So. Let me pull this off here. You know, can can we still can we say that a new trend has established? Well, you know, until until you break this, you know, so you're up to the six one eight. You can't get there. Uh, you know, fifty wicks. You know, so you've got downside here. So where's the, the where's the really sweet buy? You know, if you if you can get down here, because you know that's algo targets here. It, so if that's going to fail, because remember, just because it's there doesn't mean that algos win all the time and they always get their targets. But you know, I wouldn't want to be. I I would want to see I want to see a, you know a little bit more of a pullback here and again this is more about you know you like the story you like the performance metrics I I think you're kind of just you you know you you're it's kind of a guess here because you're stuck between two fifties not great structure not horrible structure the fibs get you know give you an opportunity to get in. But I, you know, why? Why force a trade? You know, are you just anxious to be in the market? You know, that that's just not good enough for me. In in my view, for what that's worth, in my view, it's just it's just not good enough. It's it's just a it's a roll of the dice. Maybe, you know, maybe we're heading up here. Maybe right. So if you love the story and you and you you know you're comfortable with that with that retrace down here to the little pocket that we, that we like. So th this could be the launch point. Nothing says it, it couldn't be, but 
you know, for, for the method that I'm trying to teach you guys and, and the way that I approach the market, there's not enough there yet for me to, you know, want to position capital to it. It's a contender, you know, one to watch. Certainly it's got good, good performance for the year. So, all right, that's um, 24 minutes. Uh, I'm going to wrap it there. I've been told I get a little long-winded on these, so I'm, I'm trying to keep them shorter, but I wanted to cover everything I had uh, teed up for you guys today, at least in one video. So patience right now. Patience is is what's required here, particularly on Bitcoin. You know, this is interesting that we've hit this. Does it set up the move down? I hope so. I hope so for all of us that are, if you're not in the market, you know, I, I am in the market, but from much lower levels, but I'm looking for places to add. So if you're not in and you're waiting for the opportunity, keep a close eye on this. And I would keep these up, you know, next to each other, you know, relative to whatever exchange you're trading on. And, you know, watch for that opportunity. If it comes back down, th that's one to pounce on. Okay, I'll wrap it there, guys.